Hello, this is Michael Wolfer. I am completing my assessment assignment and I am uh, reading case study number one. So the case study says that the patient I have is aged 56, currently admitted to the floor with COPD exacerbation for the last three days. I'm trying to discharge the patient when they put their call light on, complaining of severe shortness of breath. And I note that the patient's lung sounds are relatively clear when I listen. Um, past medical history is COPD, diverticulosis for the last four years, back pain controlled with NSAIDs, tension headaches, and AFib. The patient is taking metoprolol twice a day, Xeralto every day, pantoprazole every day, and has LR running in the left AC peripheral IV. So for this patient, um, the first thing that I would do is go in there and assess the patient. Shortness of breath can be really serious, so I need to know um, exactly what's going on. So I'd bring a vitals cart in there with me. Um, I'd make sure the room had oxygen um, hooked up, which I would hope so for a COPD patient who's been there for the last three days. Um, and I would really need to get a um, good set of vitals and baseline assessment on this patient. So number one, um, what is the patient's O2 sat and what is their work of breathing? Um, from what I have here, I don't have any vital signs, so I need to see this O2 sat. And it's very important in a COPD patient because um, these patients live with shortness of breath all the time. And there's a number of things that can precipitate the shortness of breath. Um, so if the patient, when I come into the room, is um, has a pulse and is breathing and no emergent action needs to be taken place like, CO, uh, like CPR or anything like that, um, I would move forward with the vital signs and getting an O2 sat on this patient. So um, if the patient had uh, O2 saturation on room air that was in the low 90s or even the low, or excuse me, the high 80s, I um, would be less concerned. COPD patients live in this um, kind of O2 range. And so on room air for this patient, it could actually be appropriate. Um, I wouldn't want to over oxygenate them. Um, so if I saw that their oxygen was in the um, lower 80s or lower 70s, definitely would be getting oxygen on this patient. Um, I would also be checking to see, you know, what is the patient doing? Are they laying down flat in bed? If that's the case, you know, I would go least invasive first, get the patient up to semi-fowlers. If they could tolerate it, I would be getting them to do um, tripod position even or um, try to do some purse lip breathing. Um, once I had that going, I um, would be asking the patient about, you know, the precipitating event. Did they just come back from a walk to the bathroom or a walk with a family member? Were they eating? What led up to what was going on? So if they were able to tell me that, I would use that information in my next actions. So if they verbalized to me they had chest pain, I would probably call a rapid response and get a STAT EKG and a stat troponin on this patient to rule out myocardial infarction. Um, uh, I think an EKG would be good for this patient anyway. So this patient has a history of AFib and they're taking uh, Xeralto. So maybe the heart through a clot, maybe something is going on there. Um, maybe this patient has a PE. So getting a D-dimer, getting clotting studies and blood studies back on clotting is gonna be really important. Um, I would also have respiratory come in if I felt it necessary on, you know, based on the patient's presentation and get an e ABG. If I see that the patient is so short of breath and they're really blowing all the CO2 off, um, I would want an ABG. Are they hypercapnic? Um, are they acidotic? We need to know what's going on there. Um, when I look at the patient's medications, I don't see... COPD control medications. So I don't see a short acting beta agonist to help them um, when they're having trouble breathing. And that's going to be really important for this patient. 
I don't see any type of glucocorticoids or long-acting beta agonists that they take daily to keep them under good control with their symptoms. And I don't see any um, prednisone or any steroids that helps them if they're having an inflammatory response in the body either. So I definitely need to call the doctor and kind of figure out why they're missing those meds. Um, and I also see metoprolol on here. And I do question it. Um, maybe it's my lack of knowledge, but I don't know that metoprolol is a medication that I see for anyone with COPD who isn't also hypertensive. So, you know, am I missing something from the medical history? Are they uh, a patient that also has hypertension? Um, but from what I know about metoprolol and it being a beta blocker, it can have an effect on those beta adrenergic cells as well, which have a lot to do with the way we breathe. So I've known um, from school before that usually beta blockers um, aren't prescribed with patients who have breathing issues in addition to hypertension. So definitely need to question the doctor about that medication. Um, and then... The patient does have uh, diverticulosis, so I need to be looking at the other vital signs. Do they have a fever right now? You know, is this patient going into diverticulitis? Have they had bowel movements in the last three days? Are they getting blocked up? Is that diverticuli on the inside getting inflamed and causing a bowel obstruction and backing up? If it is, maybe the abdomen's becoming distended and moving upward a bit and pushing on um, the diaphragm of the lungs. And so they feel tight in the chest because they're feeling additional pressure from there. Um, you know, was the patient eating or did they eat recently? Another good question to ask, you know, especially if someone was around the CNA, they were feeding them or saw it, or maybe the family member was in the room because maybe the patient is choking, you know, or maybe they did swallow some food down in the wrong way. And now we're looking at aspiration pneumonia. This is a change in condition for this patient. So COPD patients have trouble eating, you know, maybe they're coughing and having trouble breathing while they were eating. So that could definitely be an issue too. Um, so, you know, it's hard to say what got this patient to this point without having vital signs, without having the labs I discussed, without having more information. But really what we're trying to do is rule out an emergency situation like an MI, a PE. We're trying to rule out or question why the patient doesn't have good COPD control meds um, right now. We don't have any of, of that information. And um, we're trying to see if this patient really is ready for discharge. If it turns out the patient does have medications that we've been giving to control the COPD, and all of a sudden they have shortness of breath just from sitting there, they might not be a good candidate for discharge. It might take respiratory therapy, the doctor, and everyone to collaborate to try to reassess the patient and get their uh, symptoms under control before they discharge. Another good thing to know um, would be, you know, was the patient walking without oxygen? Do they have an oxygen order, um, a home oxygen order? That's really important too, because if it was ambulation that precipitated the shortness of breath, um, you know, we, we need to know um, what happened. So we might need to, once they're um, more stable, do a resting ambulation study, get them up and moving, see how much their O2 sat drops on them. And they might need an order for home oxygen so that they are able to get up and move around and do what they need to do in their daily life. Um, so medications, going back to that for a second, uh, I feel like the Xeralto is totally appropriate for prophylaxis on AFib. Pantoprazole is fine as far as I know. Um, they were in the hospital, so it's standard practice to give that. And, um, the only one that I'm really questioning is the metoprolol. I don't see any past history of, um, hypertension, and it might be that the patient needs um, a different formulation of antihypertensive medication if they have that condition. Maybe the doctor needs to, you know, be aware and I need to question that order. Um, 
other than that, I think that, like I said, I, um, if the patient presented with chest pain, I would be going in a more emergent direction. I would be um, calling a rapid response, getting a STAT EKG and a troponin to rule out MI. Um, I would need some blood studies done on uh, D-dimer and the other clotting factors going on in the body to um, try to help rule out PE and also check the effectiveness of the Xeralto. Maybe the Xeralto dose isn't where it needs to be and this patient just threw a clot from AFib. So we need to know what's going on from the EKG and the blood studies to know, um, you know, if they have anything emergent going on like that as well. Um, I think I covered everything, but if I did miss anything, please let me know and I will redo the video. Thank you for watching.